This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The midterm elections, less than three weeks away, will determine the balance of power in Congress, and black voters could play a key role. Black voters helped Democrats flip two Senate seats that gave them control of the Senate in Georgia's 2020 special runoff election. Democratic Senator Reverend Raphael Warnock of Georgia now faces Republican challenger Herschel Walker. This comes as Georgia's Republican Governor Brian Kemp is fighting for re-election against Democrat and voting rights advocate Stacey Abrams in a rematch after he signed into law new restrictions that disproportionately disenfranchise voters of color. Um, it was one of many voter suppression efforts in Republican-led states. In Florida, Republican Governor Ron DeSantis' election police unit—that's right, he has set up an election police unit—has arrested people for voting. Florida law allows formerly incarcerated people to vote unless they were convicted of murder or felony sex offenses. Those arrested say Florida officials encouraged them to vote and didn't know about the exclusion. This is police body cam footage of Tampa resident Tony Patterson and his arresting officer recently obtained by the Tampa Bay Times. Apparently, I, I guess you have a warrant? For what? I'm not it's sure. for voter stuff, man. For voters. It's, it's uh, what it is. It, I think the agents with FDLE talked to you last week about some voter fraud, voter stuff, when you weren't supposed to be voting, maybe. This is crazy, man. Y'all put me in jail for something I didn't know nothing about. Why would y'all let me vote if I wasn't, uh, I wasn't able to vote? For more, we're joined by two guests who are on a 26-city ARC of Voter Justice bus tour. They're joining us from Jacksonville, Florida, uh, on one of their tour stops. Barbara Arnwine is city is a civil rights lawyer, president of the Transformative Justice Coalition, and Kimberly Crenshaw is distributing banned books en route as part of From Freedom Riders to Freedom Readers, the Books Unbanned Tour. She's also executive director of the uh, American at the African American Policy Forum, a professor of law at UCLA and Columbia University. We'll welcome you both to Democracy Now! Um, Barbara Arnwine, your hashtag is 10 million more black votes. How are you doing this? Oh, we're doing it in two ways. One is we're registering new voters. There's something like 6 million unregistered African-American voters in this country. And we're also saying to those who are registered, 35 percent who don't vote, that you got to show up and show out every election. Don't only vote presidential. Vote in the midterms. It's so critical. Vote the whole ballot. Don't only focus on the top positions. But well, no matter what you do, vote. No matter what you do, make sure you're registered. No matter what you do, vote. And can you talk, Kimberly Crenshaw, about how you're linking these two issues, the banned book tour uh, from Freedom Riders to Freedom Readers, and why that's so critical when we're talking about voter turnout and voter registration? Well, Amy, it's it's no secret that our democracy is in crises. The efforts to suppress black voting, the efforts to gerrymander districts, this is all part of a democracy that's in deep trouble. But what a lot of people don't realize is that the same people who are trying to gerrymander our districts are trying to gerrymander our history. The same people who want to change the outcomes of elections want to change the story of, of us, the, the material, the books that tell the full story about America. So we've decided that because there is no daylight between uh, uh, racial justice and a fully multiracial democracy, we were going to join this tour to provide the information, the books, that those who are anti-Democrats don't want us to know. So we're passing out 6,000 books titles that have been banned in many of the states that we're in, ranging from the autobiography of Ruby Bridges, the six-year-old who integrated schools in New Orleans, to classics like Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye um, or Ta-Nehisi Coates' Between the World and Me. People need to understand what is behind this effort to ban what they call critical race theory. What they're essentially doing is banning the telling of our history and its contemporary consequences.
We think when voters know exactly what they're trying to do, they will show up. And as Barbara said, they will show out. <laughs> And so can you talk about the response? I mean, uh, you're right now actually in Jekyll Island, Georgia, headed to Jacksonville. Georgia is, to say the least, all eyes are on this state. When you have this race between um, Herschel Walker uh, and Reverend Raphael Warnock, Reverend Raphael Warnock just won uh, two years ago, but now will run for a full Senate term, um, this all all of the attention on this. Uh, can you talk, Barbara Arnwine, about the significance of this race and some of the other ones that you're tracking? Well, obviously, African American voters are key to all these races because, and it's, you know, we're nonpartisan and we believe that if African Americans vote, they'll vote correctly, because they're going to vote what's in the best interest, not only of their community, but the entire nation. That's one thing we know about African-American voters. They think broadly, especially African-American women voters, have a real sense of social justice for all. So it's really important to mobilize this block. And what we're seeing already in Georgia is an incredible, unprecedented, historic turnout of African-American voters. They are 37 percent of the current early voting percentages. That's a, an increase significantly from being 29 percent in the 2018 midterm elections. So African-Americans are hearing us. We've been going to communities that have the lowest voter turnout and saying, your vote matters. Don't it doesn't matter if all the candidates don't come to see you because they don't consider you high propensity voters. We consider you the most important voters. Register, vote. So yesterday we did our votercade and we went through some of the poorest, most depressed areas in Brunswick. You should have seen the people. This is like what we've been seeing everywhere. They came out. They were clapping. They were giving the power fists. They were yelling. They were screaming. They were so excited that somebody considered them important. Somebody was coming directly to them and saying, vote, it matters. It was just beautiful. That is the experience we've had in Richmond, where we were on motorcycles driving through the city uh, with the uh, Buffalo soldiers and, uh, you know, long, six block long, uh, you know, motorcade. Uh, it's been amazing. When people see the John Lewis buses, they honk on the freeways at us. They honk as we roll because people get the message. They're so happy to see somebody saying vote in a positive way, not about cancer candidates, just about the fact that as Americans and as the fact that we care and love our democracy, that it demands that we participate, that we vote. Kimberly Crenshaw, you are in Georgia. That other key race is the rematch between the longtime voting rights activist Stacey Abrams and Brian Kemp, the governor for the governorship of Georgia. Um, the significance of this race, and you're visiting these sites of white supremacist terror from the Mother Emanuel right. Church in Charleston, South Carolina, um, to talk about the places that you have been. Yes, we 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 visited um, a Wilmington, uh, which is uh, the site of a racial uh, coup uh, in 1898, and and one of the reasons that was just so significant to in us, North uh, the African American Policy Forum, uh, yes, uh, w was that you know when we had the January 6th attempted coup, there were a lot of pundits, including our our president, who said this is not who we are. And it is evidence of the fact that when our history has been erased, we don't know that we're heading in the same direction. In fact, violent coups are exactly who we've been. Um, but when we went to Wilmington and looked at the site where the coup began, where a newspaper was burned to the ground and countless numbers of African-Americans were killed and a duly elected biracial government was deposed, 
There's no marker there. There's no placard. There's no, this is what happened. And that same sentiment, that erasure of our history is what is behind these book bans and behind the effort uh, to challenge uh, the 1619 Project. It is, in fact, an effort to make racism unspeakable. And our position has been that when racism is unspeakable, then democracy, a full multiracial democracy is unachievable. There is no daylight between the two, even though when people think and talk about is our country going to the edge? Can it happen here? A lot of people say it can't, but that's just telling us that they don't realize that black history and American history are one and the same. It has happened here. And unless we understand its le legacy and its implication today, it's on the way of happening here again. And that's what we cannot allow to happen. Talk about your plans in Florida and that video we played in the introduction, astounding story um, of what uh, the governor has done in having arrested, uh, with his election police, arresting people who are attempting to vote. They said these uh, men who were in prison and came out that they can register, and if they qualify, because they didn't know if they did because they had served time in jail, um, they will be allowed to vote. And then they were handcuffed and arrested for voting. Your response? Well, they were handcuffed and arrested for voting while they had in their hands their voting cards. Now, if you're sent a voting card by your county register, wouldn't you assume that that means you have the right to vote? So the fact that DeSantis, uh, you know, people here call him D. Satan has decided that he wants to use the and play the race card by having mostly black. Look at who he's arresting. It's not just, you know, uh, whites, because more whites have been affected by these felony disenfranchisement laws than blacks, but he's mainly arresting black people, uh, that he's playing the race card because he wants to be president. It doesn't that say something ill about the, the concept of our democracy, the concept of who we are, that we want a we person have... who is using race. Because we it worked before, right, with Trump. So they're saying, OK, we'll do it again.